Hello, my name is Neto Rosatelli and welcome to the Cataract Surgery Channel. This commented surgery is a high myopia case, pretty routine in fact, but some interesting features will be highlighted. I like to cover the cornea with dispersive OVG because visualization is greatly enhanced and the cornea remains protected and wet throughout the surgery. A single plane incision is made with a 2.75 steel keratome. The blade marking helps to gauge the tunnel length, ideally in the 2mm range. A too long incision in high myopia cases requires a steep instrument approach ensuing incision distortion, hampering visualization and predisposing to incision burn. Intracameral lidocaine prevents patient discomfort as these long eyes are prone to reverse pupillary block. It may be wise not to overfill the anterior chamber with OVD to avoid a steep instrument angle doing the rexus. Now comes an important aspect. It is difficult to gauge capsular rexus size in these big eyes, so an engraved capsular rexus forceps helps in making an appropriate size at rexus and avoid problems, such as unwanted IOL optic capture or anterior dislocation. In this case, it may look small, but came out 5 mm exactly. Hydrodissection and hydrodelineation follows, facilitating cortex release from the capsule. Yeah, who doesn't like to see a beautiful golden ring? After inserting the phacal probe, you can appreciate the reverse pupillary block here, retroposing the iris lens diaphragm. Here, the nucleus is of medium density and the wet mechanical chopping technique is used to mechanically fracture the nucleus in four pieces with no ultrasound or fluidics. After fracturing, I do a little nucleus spin in both directions to help release whatever cortex that is still attached. The chopper assists in presenting the nucleus pieces to the safe zone position phaco tip. This long chopper is really helpful in that. Nucleus quadrant emulsification is done with very little ultrasound energy. Now, the remaining epinucleus shell is easily aspirated with no ultrasound energy. There is just a small cortex remnant left and it is readily aspirated with the fecal tip with the chopper protecting the posterior capsule. After taking the fecal probe from the eye, I can see that there is a great amount of lens fibers still adhering to the posterior capsule. I go back to polish the capsule with my preferred method, with the fecal probe itself. Yeah, I know this may be unnerving to some. It is a very effective method and very safe. The large opening of the tip easily sweeping the capsule and loosening the fibers, which are then flow aspirated and removed. It is not as difficult to master as it seems. The very low fluidics used makes it very safe. It's a big paradigm shift, but has many advantages. I'm doing a detailed video about this technique. IOL hydro implantation follows, and we can see the value of an engraved capsular axis forceps here. What a nice capsule overlap! If we were to gauge the axis diameter by the size of the cornea, we might end up with a too large axis. Myopic eyes can fool us easily on that. Incisions are hydrated, and a beautiful surgery ends. 
I wish you luck with your high myopia cases. Search Neto Rosatelli on YouTube or click on the link below and visit my other channel with cataract facial clips. Please like, share, subscribe and turn notifications on so you don't miss upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.